uh, the only way that you can find the, the appropriate zeros for um, a pointless polynomial, the you know, sorry, rational inequality, is to move everything to one side. Uh, so we'll go 1 over x minus 9, 1 over x plus 2, and it's going to be minus then 2x over, and I'm going to factor this uh, to x, or is it minus 1, x plus 2. We know we need to factor, so it's going to go at the same time, same step. Um, so we're going to write it that way. Uh, now, we know that the zeros for this entire thing are going to be at least at 9, negative 2, and positive 1. Uh, but the numerator, we're not necessarily sure where that next zero comes from, or if there will even be a zero from the numerator. Um, because we actually, we need to condense these to one ratio before we can do anything, okay? And when I want to condense to one ratio, I need a common denominator, right? So I'm going to look at the, uh, all the components here, and, and basically I'm going to write these three fractions with that common denominator. So the common denominator is going to have x minus 9 in it. It's going to have x plus 2 in it. Right, because x plus 2 shows up there, and it shows up there. I only need it once, right? Okay. Uh, if one of those was raised to like a second power or a third power, I take the one that has the higher power. Okay. Uh, you need um, the largest uh, exponent of, of common factors. Uh, and then the other one is x minus 1. So I'm going to write all those down. x minus 9, x plus 2, x plus 1, x minus 9, x plus 2, and now I'll just go through and say, okay, once I've set up the denominators, I can compare these fractions. I know that this fraction here is going to go to that one, this one is that one, and this one becomes that one. Uh, and now I just look at how did I change the denominators, because that's going to how I have to change the numerator. So the x minus 9 in this first one uh, was constant, it was stayed, okay? So then I had to multiply the bottom by x plus 2 times x minus 1, right? So I got to do something at the top. The top's going to become 1 times x plus 2 times x minus 1. Now over in the second one, the x plus 2 was um, what stayed, okay? So that was the, um, the denominator that was, was already there. So I need to multiply that by x minus 9 and x minus 1. So up top, I need to multiply that 1 by x minus 9 and x minus 1. And then in the last fraction, uh, the x minus 1, the x minus 2, those were already there. And all I had to do is multiply by x minus 9. So I need to multiply the 2x that is already up top by an x minus 9. Okay? Um, now what happens, like, like I said earlier, we have the uh, zeros from the denominator, 9, negative 2, and positive 1. But there's a lot of stuff in these numerators that uh, could be like terms. They're just kind of hiding right now, all right? So we have to multiply everything out in those numerators. Um, so when we do this, we're going to get, and at this stage, if you want to, you can put it all over the, the one common denominator, x minus 9, x plus 2, x minus 1. Um, this thing here, so you're going to foil, foil that out, you get x squared uh, plus 2x minus x, so plus x minus 2. You're going to FOIL this one out. So it gives you positive x squared minus 9x minus 1x, so minus 10x, and then plus 9. And then you're going to do the same thing here, okay? Just be careful there because what is the sign out front? Negative. Negative. So that, it becomes 2x squared minus 18x, right? But you're going to subtract both those things. So it becomes minus 2x squared. Okay? And then this, when I distribute that there, it's going to be negative 18x, but it's minus a negative 18x, so it becomes plus 18x. Okay? You're subtracting that quantity, right? Maybe some of you like to do it this way. I think it's probably a safe way of doing it. Just evaluate that or simplify that to 2x squared um, minus 18x. Put it in parentheses, and now you know you're subtracting that quantity. 
So you can just minus the two x squared and then minus the negative eighteen x if there's a positive thing. But the biggest mistake I see there is that everybody that does this wrong, for the most part, gets everything right except for that minus sign. Okay, put a minus sign there, which should be a plus sign. Um, but now what's nice about this stuff, a lot of times when this happens, x squared, not every time, so make sure you're, you are going through and look at this, that's 2x squared, right? There's a negative 2x squared. So they wipe each other out. So your x squared terms have disappeared, which makes this a nice problem, because uh, we don't have to do all that factoring now, okay? Um, I have, here's a negative 9x, right? Throw two together. Negative 9x plus 18x <laughs> gives me 9x. So my numerator so far has a 9x in it. And then we've got minus 2 plus 9, so minus 7, right? 9x plus 7. 9x plus 7 uh, ends up being that numerator. Our denominator now is x minus 9, x plus 2, x minus 1. Uh, I go back to the beginning, what is less than? Greater than. So we're greater than or equal to 0. Okay. This brings in a, another um, concept that we should probably talk about. Um, we could be greater than or equal to 0. That means that, that there could be a lot of uh, closed dots, right? Okay, uh, we can include values here. Okay, so we go find our zeros. And, uh, this zero here is going to be negative, what, 7 ninths? Uh, this one's going to be 9, this one's going to be negative 2, this one's going to be positive 1. So I go find those things on my x axis. Maybe 9 is over here. Um, maybe 1 is there. Uh, negative 7 ninths is there. Negative 2 is there. Uh, so those are my four zeros. Okay, but I think it warrants a little bit of discussion. Can I really have maybe nine? nine. Can I really have nine as a closed end dot? No. Why not? Then the denominator. Okay, so I think it's always a good idea. Um, when you have equal, because if it's just greater than, it doesn't really matter because there'll always be an open dot. But if you have equality, always go to your denominator zeros. And, and before you do anything, before you do any sign terms, just put open dots on those values. To remind yourself um, that when you are done, they have to remain as open dots. Okay. Um, I, I I try to force myself to do that right away because I know that when I'm done, when I go through all these sign chart stuff, I've stopped thinking about those values being from the denominator, and I'll a lot of times put brackets around where it should be a parentheses. Okay. So I kind of start learning about how you know you do things. Um, and that might allow you to change your techniques a little bit. Uh, but then we put our our factors over here, 9x plus 7, x minus 9, x plus 2, uh, x minus 1, and then we got our total p of x. Going through here, if I take like negative 10, that's going to be a negative number. That'll be a negative number, negative number, negative number, so my total is positive, right? Uh, in here, uh, maybe we choose the negatives, negative ones in there, right? So let's choose negative one. Uh, that would be a negative. Uh, this would be a negative again. This would be positive. And this would be negative. So my total then is negative. Uh, zero's in this interval, so I'll choose zero. Uh, so it gives me positive there, negative there. Positive, negative, so my total then, I got two negatives, so my total is positive. Uh, between one and nine, choose something like maybe five. Positive, um, negative, positive, and another positive, so my total then, I got an odd number of negatives, so my total is two negatives. And then beyond ten, just think about this. Uh, everything beyond 10 aren't always going to be positive. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so. And then the, the task is to find things that are greater than or equal to zero. So that one, that one, and that one. Okay. Um, so when we do this, 
I like to shade on my uh, number line first. So I know I need to incorporate those values. I need to incorporate these values. Okay, now can I use negative seven ninths? Yes, so that one needs to be closed in. And then we've got those guys over there. So I'm just trying to uh, trying to, to rewrite these things in interval notation. We go from negative infinity up to negative two. Parentheses on both those, open dots. Uh, now we're going to go to negative seven ninths, bracket, uh, up to one, parentheses around one, and then we go to nine to infinity, parentheses around both those, and then union everything. The, the, there's a lot of preliminary work in that to get to the, the position where we can find our factors, uh, find our zeros. Um, the hope is, though, you start to recognize why maybe you spent time last year, uh, spent time a little bit, maybe in algebra one, spent a little bit of time at the beginning of this course dealing with um, combining rational uh, components. Taking, you know, we've got three rational expressions up there, right? And we, we combine them, we, we add them together, common denominator, all that kind of stuff, LCD, uh, to... We, we do that stuff to, to learn a task so that we can apply it later on in a new concept. And we, can, we have to directly apply it here uh, so we can come up with those intervals. Okay? It's a good question. Uh, let's, 